Well hello again. I recently decided to build an arid vivarium for my newly adopted leopard gecko. I kept arid vivariums with live succulents when I was a kid, but they were fairly rudimentary and were not bioactive. From doing a little bit of casual research, it appears that the information available to make a bioactive arid or desert vivarium is not as readily available as making a bioactive tropical vivarium. So I decided I would try to use my familiarity with desert ecosystems and leopard gecko husbandry to set up a bioactive and enriched arid vivarium. I'm still waiting on a few items that I need to set up the final enclosure, but I wanted to discuss the basics of the setup. The substrate mix I'm going to be using in my setup, the light required to grow desert plants indoors, and maybe touch on potential plant and cleanup crew species. On my annual trip down to the Mojave Desert, I made some field observations that may be informative to keepers of pet reptiles. Specifically, I was looking at substrate within the Mojave scrub habitats and how those might be extrapolated to leopard gecko and other scrubland desert species, but I took some temperature and UVB measurements when I was down there as well. Leopard geckos come from Afghanistan, Pakistan, Iran, and parts of India. They're one of the most common lizard species in captivity, and there are many opinions about what substrate is most appropriate for them. Many keepers are cautious of sandy substrates, and the most extreme keepers insist that no loose substrate is appropriate for leopard geckos due to the risk of GI obstruction. My position is that the risk of impaction on natural substrate is overstated. To back this up, I wanted to see photos and video of the habitat where leopard geckos live in the wild. There's a white paper that I found on ResearchGate that specifically mentions two locations within Pakistan, the Salt Range in Punjab, as well as Karana Hills, Sargoda, which I believe is also in Punjab. Forgive me if I'm mispronouncing any of these names. Uh, both of these are rocky, arid scrubland habitat, and both also look really quite a bit like the Mojave Desert, at least superficially. With that similarity in mind, it makes sense to me that the Mojave is home to the Desert Banded Gecko, which is a North American eyelid gecko species from the same family as leopard geckos. Banded geckos are the closest relatives to leopard geckos native to the United States, and they are reported to have similar care requirements to leopard geckos in captivity. So I do think it is fair to use them as a locally accessible stand-in for leopard geckos. For all the concern over GI impaction on loose substrates, banded geckos do live on loose substrate in the wild. They don't live on sand, per se, at least not in the way that reptile keepers might think of sand, which is like fine sand that makes up sand dunes. Uh, sand dunes are present in the Mojave, but you're not likely to find uh, geckos actually up on the dunes. Rather, banded geckos live in rocky desert scrub land habitat where the soil is made up of a substantial amount of decomposed granite and the topmost layer is essentially loose, coarse sand. Lower layers are more compact and these layers are where plants root and the animals are actually digging their burrows. Footage of wild leopard geckos is very hard to come by, but the two videos I was able to find show the animals on substrates with what appear to be a similarly loose surface layer. With all this information in mind, I feel that impaction from a somewhat loose substrate is unlikely based on the habitats of these species in the wild. Furthermore, the herpticulture of leopard geckos describes a hobbyist experiment in which two generations of leopard geckos were raised on a soil and sand mix with fairly coarse granules, and no animals ever died from any sort of impaction. Geckos by Bartlett and Bartlett describes a 40-year history of keeping geckos on sand without any impactions, and Mater's Reptiles and Amphibian Medicine and Surgery describes impactions due to regular sand as mostly anecdotal, with actual evidence impactions occur on non calci sand as scarce. So based on my reading, my wild observations of banded geckos, and my past experience with leopard geckos, I'm going to be using a mix of decomposed granite, cocoa fiber, and clay topsoil with compost. Decomposed granite and topsoil can be obtained from rock yards for like less than a dollar per gallon, and cocoa fiber is available from reptile and nursery suppliers. This mix compacts down nicely when mixed with water, meaning that the final product should not be loose enough that your animals will be accidentally ingesting it while hunting. I've tested this mix on a few plant species that I bought, and so far they appear to be taking to it quite well. I've tested a few succulents, a small Joshua tree that I grew from seed, and a sage plant. I'm hoping to obtain a few additional plants before setting up my enclosure. COVID closures have drastically decreased my access to specialty plant suppliers, unfortunately. Desert plants require much higher light than tropical understory plants that are typically used in tropical vivaria. I use a light meter to get a rough idea of the output for my artificial lights. A large well-lit tropical terrarium is probably 100 to 200 foot candles at the bottom, whereas full sun in the Mojave when I took a measurement was actually 1700 foot candles. I'm going to try a very bright LED grow panel that is 5000K, which is the color of daylight. This panel appears to be of sufficient brightness, but it does have a reputation for burning out, so we'll see how it works. If this does not work, I may need to make my own panel, but we can cross that bridge when we come to it in the future. As for cleanup crew, I'm not entirely sure what my plan is, to be totally honest. I have mealworm and superworm beetles, and I will introduce springtails and isopods into the moist hide. 
In the Mojave, there are flies, beetles, and ants, and all of these bugs seem to do the majority of the scavenging, but I obviously can't introduce ants or flies into my enclosure, so I'm gonna be going with just the beetles. Um, if anyone has any ideas beyond beetles, please feel free to leave me a comment and I will give it a shot. When I was down in the Mojave, I was hoping to come across some uh, blue death feigning beetles. I found one, but I didn't end up collecting him, I just let him go. So that might be something that I try in the future as well. I'll leave you with some footage of a few desert species that I saw on my recent trip and the UVB indices and temperatures they were found basking in. Thanks so much for watching and take care. Thank you.